Hey everybody, uh, welcome to part 4 of my tutorial on the making of Discovering Religion. It's been a while since I've done one of these and I've been uh, working on episode 22 uh, the past couple days. So I kind of wanted to share a couple uh, things that I've been working on with Photoshop, correct some mistakes that I had made. I also want to give some organization tips as well as show you a cool website that I found um, to find some good images on. So before we get into the editing, I just want to go over some quick uh, organization tips. I believe originally we went over this in episode 2, but I have just a couple more things to add. Here is an example of the script that I've been working on. Uh, this is uh, episode 22. Um, and you can see here that after each paragraph, um, or before each paragraph, I put a number. So you can see this goes to about 19 uh, paragraphs, or 19 individual sections. So like I said before, this is um, you know, my, uh, my working folder. This is episode 22. Uh, part 1, Part 2, Part 3. So in Part 1 I've got my images and then used and working. So in working you can see that I have 19 folders. So what I do is I go look up images on Google Image or other websites and, uh, and corresponding to this paragraph, paragraph 1, I go through the first paragraph and I kinda see like you know how am I gonna illustrate my points. I go to Google Image and find various images that could illustrate my points and then save them into folder one. So these are the, the various concepts that I had to put into uh, paragraph one. So then I go on down the list and I keep doing that for each paragraph until I have all my images collected. I go into my use folder, I open up the uh, the template, and then I just start adding in the images, cropping them, and uh, editing them, and then numbering them one through however it goes. So I went down to about 83 for that part one. Uh, so that's just kinda how I keep organized. You know, Basically I just number my paragraphs, create a corresponding folder, put just a collection of images there that I think will be helpful in illustrating my points and then I move those over into what we talked about in episode 2 about numbering them all the way down. That way when you go to create your voiceover you um, have the images already and you might actually change parts of the script depending on what kind of images you can find. If you have all the images pre-made then producing your soundtrack and producing your voiceover and everything is very very fast so this is the most streamlined method that I've found and uh, it really helps me out. So now I'd like to talk about Photoshop and a couple things that I first struggled with when I uh, originally started using Photoshop. There's not a whole lot of options for creating like objects or arrows and things like that and uh, you kinda have to produce them from scratch which if you don't know what you're doing can kinda be annoying. I've got a couple things pre-made that I want to talk about. I guess we'll talk about objects. Uh, there's kind of a, an arrow that I wanted to make so this is the final image and what I was trying to do is create these arrows to show how God's morality or objective morality is uh, circular and non-informative. So you just arrange these pieces of text where you want them to be and um, I'm not really going to go into how to do that. That's, that's fairly simple. Just uh, You take the text tool, put it where you want it and then just start typing and, uh, and then arrange it with this, this arrow here. You can just arrange it where you want it. But now you need to create the arrows. This option right here you hold down the mouse button and you can see that there's different options. Go to the ellipse tool and uh, go in here to your colors and change that to white and then just create an ellipse basically like that. Uh, then we're gonna go just to uh, that option right there basically uh, just makes it uh, an image. I'm not really sure like the definition of all these different terms but Basically, that um, it creates it from being like kind of a manipulated object or whatever it was into just being a, a solid object. I don't know really how to describe it, but anyway, just do that option and then you can play around with the, uh, the image. Before we manipulate it, double click it or you can go down to here to this effects and go down to the opacity and bring down the opacity so we can kind of see through it. Then what you do is you hit Control T, that's the hot key for this. You go down to uh, Free Transform. Up in, up in edit and then down to free transform or you can just hit control T and now you can move that around. Um, one of the things I want to clarify uh, in the other episode I was telling you to um, to create it as a, a smart object right here. Um, you don't need to do that. You don't need to create a smart object. Uh, you can do that. Uh, creating a smart object will kind of keep the um, the pixel ratio of it and keep it kind of a higher quality image. Um, I was told to do that by a friend but it's actually not really necessary. So instead of creating it as a smart object um, 
just go ahead and hit Control T and do a free transform. That's just one of the one things I wanted to correct. The outline of this uh, circle right here is basically where we want the arrows to go. So that looks about right, actually. I don't really need to do a whole lot to this. Um, it's basically coming from here, going right into the middle of that one. So it's, it's kind of in the middle of all the text. So that's good, actually. Now that we've uh, positioned this where we want it, go back in here, double click, bring back the opacity. Now what we want to do is create uh, this into an arrow. We want basically just this to be an outline. So we're going we're gonna to click on this frame, make sure that this frame is selected, this layer is selected. So we're going to hit Control A, so that's uh, select all. You can see that the entire border is selected. Now we're going to right click and say layer by copy. Now we're going to go here, change the color down to black and make sure that this layer is selected and we're going to color it black. Now on this black layer selected that's on top of the white layer we're going to hit control T so we're going to go back into the free transform and then when you put your arrow here see how it basically just however your arrow moves is how the uh, has been resized I'm going to hit control Z and undo that. What you do is you hold down the alt key you can see how the arrow changes Then go down here to the corner and as you move in it moves all sides equally see so this gives you the ability to kind of gauge how thick you want the border to be if we didn't do that it would just move to one corner if you use uh, shift if you hold down shift what it does is it moves it see how the arrow I can move the mouse up and down but it still keeps the uh, original size now if I let go of shift then I can move my arrow up but if I hit shift See, it turns it back to the original uh, dimensions of the, uh, of the object. So we're going to use the Alt key. So then uh, click off on it, hit Apply. Now what you do is you take these two layers, the black and white one, and we're going to just hit Shift and do a multiple select, right click, and hit merge layers. Now go up to this here to your magic wand and we're gonna select the inner border of that black and then we're gonna hit delete and then see how this is still highlighted it's still uh, selected if you hit control D that's deselecting it and now you're free to uh, do what you want so now we have this white line here uh, now we want to create like these arrows so we need to make an arrow ahead um, you could make it yourself, but I just find it's much easier to go to Google Image. So now we've imported the arrow into our project, and we're just going to use the uh, wand again. Select around that, delete it. Uh, now we're going to open that up, and we're going to do a color overlay. And we're going to make that white. And we're going to go in pretty close and just uh, chop the back half off. Uh, okay, now we're going to have to do a color overlay again. I messed that up. See that white layer? It's just a layer. It doesn't stay. For some reason, it doesn't stay. If you were to copy this again and paste it, the white wouldn't stay. It's just like the layer properties. It isn't the, the object itself. One way to make the changes permanent to any layer that you, you mess around with, the way that you make uh, the changes to the layer permanent is go up here, say create a smart object, and then do this, ob this option again. And now it's the layer. All those properties of that layer are now combined and this is the object that you see. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Rotate it. I'm going to try to get perfectly lined up here. Then we're just going to copy that. Hit, con hit Control A, then Control C, copy it. And we're going to go over to this area. Okay, now I've put the arrowheads on each of the sides. I'm going to go to my eraser tool and on the circle layer right here I'm just going to erase 
Make sure the eraser is on hard. That's it. Now what you can do is just merge those layers together. Then if you wanted to separate each arrow, just select one and hit layer by cut. There you go. So now they're all their own arrows. Now we're going to try to import this into um, Pinnacle. So I'm going to just name this one So now I've directed it to the uh, pinnacle. So now I'm going to use a transition here to kind of make it seem like the arrow is being drawn. This is a very basic animation that I'm I'm using with these uh, transitions. So uh, if you know if you're a professional editor, then kind of excuse my uh, my ignorance on the subject. I'm not. I just kind of make it up as I go, and this is just a, a way that I found that works for me. So as you move kind of draws it. Now one thing I've noticed with Pinnacle, as it draws here, see it ends actually at this point. So you don't really, if you wanted the uh, the next part to come basically right as the arrow is done being drawn, you need to put it on the second layer. So what I do is I put right here. So now exactly the moment that it's being done drawn, it shows up. Maybe even move it over a little bit. See, and then you can just go ahead and cut this up and then just move this back up to the top. And then we just do the same for the rest. Um, so on this one you want to transition that's going to be moving over to the side. Now let's see how it looks.